Hi, everyone. Uh, so I was told to stand here. The MEV Garden. So that's a very, very sweet name because we've been talking about the dark forest for a long time. Uh, so my name is Tomasz Steinczak. I'm made at Flashbots, founder of NetaMind, uh, trying to wear a few hats. And we'll be talking about how to connect uh, through PBS many different domains with SWAF. Um, so this is not an announcement of a product. It's not a suggestion that Flashbot's going to build it. It's more like building the open, presenting you a bit more of undercooked ideas that potentially will be rejected. Like maybe something will be missing in quality. Maybe it will be not really aligned with the values, uh, all the values that are at Flashbot. So illuminating through the bringing transparency to MEV activity, providing permissionless access to MEV extraction, and distributing fairly the MEV revenue. All right, so once again, MEV Garden will move away to something that's a bright place, clearly divided into components, PBS, uh, and with kind of conditions for everyone to participate. So we're talking about uh, connecting everything with the existing ecosystem and making sure that there is place for everyone, especially that the users feel very good in this ecosystem. This is one of the small steps, really, what we'll be showing. And hopefully, we'll end up with something like this. Uh, and maybe a little survey, like uh, how, how many of you know what PBS is? OK, it's getting better and better. So now we divided it slightly more, but just slightly more. So I said that builders would divide them into the sequencers and builders. Sequencers will be choosing the transactions, sequencing transactions, uh, and the builders will be building blocks out of the transactions that are uh, pre-selected. So it may happen in some of the setups. And it's particularly might be important if you start talking about the shared sequencers. So start to forget for a moment that sequencers are what in the rollup is uh, like everything together. And uh, how nowadays we see the PBS done. So I'll go quickly over maybe some very simple visualizations of what we have, what we can end up with. So nowadays many of the rollups are like SAML2 and a centralized native sequencer in it. Um, the decentralization very often is seen as like just um, introduce a few sequencers and leader election and they start proposing blocks one after another depending on some, some rules. Um, with a shared sequencer, we say that the sequencer is actually shared between multiple L2s, L1s, and we may have some atomicity with it. Mm, and then the, something that is like Ethereum nowadays would be you start splitting the sequencers into proposers and builders. So there's builder market, they're bidding for the, for the best block, and there's proposers. So you know all of this, right? Mm. Now I start to say that, we, we will say that shared sequencers and native sequencers, like centralized sequencers, all of this can coexist, and you can start to have various combinations of all those setups. And also, a very important thing is that PBS does not necessarily require uh, that the proposers are decentralized. You can have a centralized proposer native to the rollup and still create a builder market. So they can be bidding for the best block and the proposer may decide to either capture that value for the operator of the L2 or to maybe burn it for the protocol. And now, as I say, all of this may coexist. And because we can have uh, many different protocols arriving at the solutions at very different times, uh, we've different, like we've seen Arbitrum proposal, we see what Scroll was proposing, what Starknet is working on, and so on and so on. So maybe in this world for a few years, uh, where we want to create the market, start building the markets for MEV and for PBS, and, and still connect all of those different protocols. Um, so when we know that we want to achieve that, we set some design goals for the protocol that will allow to do the PBS with the cross-domain MEV. And we want to support that heterogeneous sequencer space, different designs. We want to enable permissionless and transparent cross-domain MEV market. Uh, we want to be in line with the whatever happens on Ethereum, but also be in line with what happens with other chains, right? So, so think about uh, not too much pushing the protocols themselves to change. We want to operate slightly outside of the protocol, maybe opposite to what, what Zaki was saying, or maybe not opposite, but related to what, uh, what Saki was saying. Um, 
we want to respect the position of various market players that are building shared sequencers, middlewares, um, risk-taking solutions, and so on. So we want to make sure that everyone feels like, oh, wow, there is a marketplace arising, there is a game which I'll be able to play with, uh, play inside. Uh, we want to make sure that it's swap aligned, so that's my internal goal, like make sure that whatever we're working on at Flashbots is actually part of our greater vision that is strategically well-tested and discussed. Mm, and one thing is that, and we keep thinking about it, we need to ensure that their equal rights are there for the solo stakers and large operators to participate in that game. And this is for the, for the like, validators or proposers. And now, uh, this will be the proposal for what we really can build to try to support all of these requirements. Uh, so first of all, we want to have some kind of chain. It can be swap chain, it can be something uh, on the side of swap chain, which is just uh, like a global ordering system. So a set of oracles or whatever construction, and the construction here is not really defined on the technical level, more on the, on the vision idea level. We want to order the blocks on different chains and have a way of looking at this ordering from the outside just to use it for construction of the proofs and slashings. So I'm saying I'm looking at Etherscan, StarkNet, Polygon, and many other chains potentially, and maybe even things outside of the L2 or Ethereum space, and I want to keep order of everything that I can do possibly within all of those domains. And I say that I want to introduce a definition of uh, synchronized block proposals. So if I'm a shared sequencer, for example, I'm practically, uh, in some cases, I'll be sure that I'm proposing blocks that will happen at the same time. Like, so uh, I know that I, like if it was a base roll up on L1, I know that every 12 seconds I produce block, and within that block I'll be producing blocks, batching blocks for multiple rollups. So I can start making some promises, but to describe those promises, we need to agree on some definitions. And I'm not sure what those definitions would be uh, over time in the market, which of those would be the most, uh, like the strongest. And, and here, for example, seeing something like a very strict definition, like we're looking at two different domains, and we don't allow anything in between. So um, on the screen, the Ethereum block 100 will be synchronized with the StarkNet block but not with the following Ethereum block and not with any of the blocks before the StarkNet block because they belong to a different domain and, and there is something in between. So I want the blocks to be exactly next to each other. But then maybe this will be difficult and maybe I would sometimes not care about the other domains because I'm trying to synchronize two blocks to extract MEV and maybe not always I will believe that for some other chain's construction I can extract that MEV before, before this happens, before the synchronized execution happens. Uh, so maybe I want to define something that is like strict but within the domain. So as long as there is no other block that belongs to the same domain as the two blocks that I'm talking about, in between that it's synchronized. So here the Ethereum block is synchronized with StarkNet block. It's also synchronized with the Polygon block because there's nothing from Ethereum or Polygon in between. So there's only StarkNet block in between and it belongs to another domain, so I don't care. And uh, the more domains I will see there, the more I will probably want to restrict the number of domains that I care about when defining what does it mean that it's synchronized. And then I may say that, well, I really care only about the situations when both domains that I'm synchronizing between, or multiple domains, like we can probably extend it to many domains, uh, if, if no set of blocks happened in between uh, that would belong to the same domains, then, then everything is fine. So here I really say that even one of the last polygon blocks is still, um, is still synchronized with Ethereum, Ethereum block 100, but the StarkNet block 202 is not synchronized with that block because we see both the Ethereum and StarkNet block in between. So this is not very strict. I'm just proposing something that may be relevant when making an announcement. Like if I'm a, if I'm a sequencer proposer, uh, as a proposer, I want to, uh, so hmm, shared sequencer proposer, I want to make commitments to what I'm going to do, and I have to describe it in somehow. And as, I, as we were working on it, we discovered that, well, the definition is not that obvious. We may still need to work about which definition will stick. Um, the communication about this, the announcements, may happen through something like nowadays, through the relay, 
but potentially may happen through the attestations and P2P network. So there should be no difference whether we keep the uh, existing ideas of Ethereum and existing uh, roadmap and whether we change it towards the ePBS and trend PBS, not really, to the, to the way we approach this, this solution at Mivi Garden. And when you look at the proposals of uh, Pepsi, like protocol enforced uh, proposal commitments, uh, you can think of this a bit like a cross domain Pepsi. Uh, so cross chain PBS, we're adding communication layer from proposers to builders. So the other direction, proposers make announcements, like in Pepsi, like some, some announcements of what I would like to commit to. And I define X synchronization between the blocks that I'm about to commit to. And I can be slashed if I don't deliver that, so we'll show how to do that. And once again, think of it maybe as a cross-domain Pepsi. Um, and this is part of the design goals. We want to create the permissionless and transparent market. So you start to feel maybe it's permissionless because we created that chain and anyone can start announcing, um, announcing this like proposals, defining some kind of, we can have some format description of what I'm going to do as a shared sequencer. I can say Polygon, Ethereum block, um, in 10 minutes, they'll be synchronized according to the strict domain rule. And, uh, and if I don't deliver, you can slash me. If I do deliver, then I actually can start bidding on that proposal. And any of those shared sequencers, native sequencers, decentralized sequencers may start judging themselves how much of the probability of delivery of that, of that commitment they have. Do I only propose it, only announce it if it's 100%, if I'm sharing sequencer? Or sometimes I want to start extracting value even if I have 5% chance, 50% uh, chance of success. And I know what, the, what my deposit is, what can be slashed. So this is both the global time with the set of proposals. We look at this chain and we see that we start noticing blocks and there is a commitment from a proposer saying, I'll do synchronized Starknet Ethereum blocks. And then we start seeing bids from the block builders that are now cross-domain block builders. And they're bidding on, on what, what will be the best payment to that synchronized proposer. The block is selected. When it's accepted, when the bid is accepted, then from now on, we practically have a promise that there is some slashing. So the deposits where exactly it's deployed, it, uh, it's maybe not the most relevant. It can be something on this chain, I mean something outside, some restaking solutions and so on. And then we feel at the end, either I delivered synchronized blocks according to that definition, or I failed. If I delivered, I get the bid that was promised. If I failed, I'm gonna be slashed. Uh, why is it important in the SWAV roadmap alignment? Well. I, if, you, if you've seen the presentation from Robert about SWAV, we were talking about this promise that a searcher can say, I'll pay you one if, if you deploy something on two different chains. So without this, maybe the, the, the one problem is that I may make this promise, but on the other side, the executor has to have some kind of expectation about how likely they are to achieve that success of landing something on two different blocks. And they want to have someone else promising that yes, they can do that for them. So the executor want to have a bid, but also a promise that they can operate on that bid and start simulating and building blocks. So this is the component that is needed for SWAF uh, to connect for the cross domain. Um, and this one thing is here in yellow because it's kind of missing. This is risky, it's, uh, it's to be explored. Uh, how the solo stakers, solo proposers, validators, can compete with the large operators that have huge overlap between two networks. So shared sequencer is a simple case, but if I'm large operator two networks, for example, 70% of blocks on one network, 70% of blocks on the other network, more likely 30 or so, uh, then I will have overlaps very often. I can make these promises of cross-domain extraction all the time so I can capture more and more value. So within these, we have to make sure that those proposals between the solo stakers, solo proposers, uh, can be somehow coordinated and that we know what exactly happens if the slashing happens, who is at fault for not delivering. 
And now what's the roadmap? Well, ensuring that the design is actually satisfying all those goals, supporting PBS on multiple chains so they can be connected to this solution. And this is not trivial as we've seen, um, there are different questions about uh, what consensus mechanisms are used, like if it's Dendermint, how this will work there, if it's Ethereum L2, how it will work there, how it will work with provers, and so on and so on. So that PBS work already started many, uh, we look at many protocols and try to help them uh, to build POCs. So reach out if you would like to have those conversations with the Flashbots team. Um, and yes, we'll love to hear from all of the L2s, all of the domains, of what exactly works here, what doesn't work, is there much MEV to make here, uh, how the market makers think about it, is it really needed, and is it value aligned, uh, yeah. And just to summarize, maybe, the slide was initially at the front, but we didn't know about the time, so, um, the Flashbots Nethermind collaboration started around 2021, and there's a bit of invitation for many builders teams or like protocol engineering teams to, to maybe start collaboration with SWAF, uh, with, with Flashbots on SWAF on multiple components. We do lots of uh, research materials together, FRPs, but we also do engineering, so I hope that the journey of being totally outside of Flashbots and enjoying the uh, fantastic time on research and building can be your journey as well. Thank you so much. That's all from me.